Yep. Yeah, Tom. Uh, members of the council, Harry Moran is more name, the applicant of the proposed subdivision and the planning uh, unit development of 15 Dunn Street, Benoa. I wish to provide you with some background or the history of our development. In 2017, we started this development with a draftsman from Shepparton with the design being approved under a previous uh, council planning permit, P0171, uh, sorry, 1-17. Uh, development approval number is DA6602. This was done in 2018. Unfortunately, due to personal circumstances, uh, this led to the delay of the actioning of the permit. And as our two year timeline of expiry to this permit drew near, we decided to change our design. Uh, amendments were made to the cladding, the roof design, the floor plan, all staying under the previously approved planning uh, building footprint. Uh, the complaint has raised uh, objections against the following areas, insufficient drainage, the road development of the current dwellings and the street, excessive medium, uh, excessive medium density housing in involving family centered street, insufficient parking on and off the street for additional residents, uh, potential uh, de detrimental property values to existing owners, uh, I respond to these areas of concern to the planning department, believe the responses should satisfy the complaint tips concerns. Uh, our development is structured to assist the housing crisis around town and uh, around Victoria. Our previous planning permit was approved in 2018 under the same roof line design with amendments to the cladding, roof design and foundations. The floor plan and layout uh, and design of the units has not changed from the previously approved planning permit in 2018. The intention of this new design is to ensure the unit development is a long-term uh, sustainability project and considered an asset to the town. Uh, I thank you for your time. Yeah, yes. Yep. We initially probably put together a cost-effective design that I could put together. I was training at the time. Um, I used to coach the local footy team here and had a number of injuries. And one of those injuries actually was in the time that we got approved for the, the permit itself, um, which led to me not being able to do these works. Um, I've moved on since. I'm, I'm now in a different industry altogether. Uh, it'll be Cavalier Homes that will do the homes for me. And I got them to amend the design and and put them on, um, instead of having stump foundations, put them on a slab, change it to a brick veneer, um, just change the roof line a bit so it looked a little bit more presentable. Um, but yeah, it was just a cost-effective design that we were looking at. Is that it for me? Thank you, Chair. I present a planning application to construct two dwellings to the rear of an existing dwelling at 15 Dunn Street, Benella. The land is located on the east side of Dunn Street and is rectangular in shape, containing an overall area of 831 square metres. The land contains a single weatherboard dwelling to the front of the site and an existing crossover within the northwest corner. The proposal involves the construction of two single-storey dwellings to the rear of the existing dwelling. Each proposed dwelling will contain two bedrooms and will be provided with a single carport. Vehicle access will be obtained via the existing crossover and driveway along the and a driveway along the north boundary of the site. The proposed subdivision will apportion land to each of the existing and proposed dwellings on the land and the driveway will become common property for access to each dwelling. The proposed have Proposal was advertised and one objection was received, including a petition containing 11 signature, signatures. The issues raised within the objections are summarised on page seven of the report and generally relate to drainage, excessive housing density and insufficient car parking. All referral authorities advise of no objection to the proposal subject to conditions. The proposal is considered to be generally to generally comply with the requirements of Clause 55 and Clause 56 of the Vanilla Planning Scheme and provides for a development that will be in keeping with the character of the surrounding area without impacting on the amenity of adjoining and nearby properties. The recommendation is on pages 17 to 
28 of the report for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Are there any questions for Joel? Um, Joel, just curious, the um, petition that was received with 11 signatures, um, did were they signing for all four of those um, objections or was it specific? They were signing underneath those four objections, those four points of objection. Thank you. Okay. I went for a drive the other day, had a look at these things. I let the developments that's great. Mm -hmm. It's the case. Um, they don't come to us because they will be the first of theirs. They come to council so they do need a planning permit however they don't need to be notified to adjoining properties they are department of housing yes. thank you um so joel on page 11 under the um the listing b28 um it says down in that in that last one um the secluded private open space they've got to have a high fence there and then that makes the area comply that's a, a, a high fence at the front of the yeah. development if that high fence wasn't put in would it be compliant if no because it's got to be a secluded private it's open space so it's, yeah so it needs that fence in order for yeah. it to be contained to be private and I just got a follow-on question, please, Mr. Chair. Um, and then is, is it my am I right in understanding that the state government is actually encouraging these multi um dwellings on a on a block of land to try and um you know uh manage our high housing crisis in uh, at the moment? I yes, so it's known as urban consolidation. Okay. So it's the aim is to consolidate as many houses as possible within existing areas that have existing infrastructure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Well, thank you, Joel. And thanks uh, for the speech, Sir Murat. Um, the table for assessment, assessment detail table, uh, the page. 10 B13 landscaping. The landscape plan uh, will be required as a condition of the permit. What is the corresponding uh, condition in the? Oh, right. I couldn't really read it in that. Condition four. Condition four. And five. Thank you. Yeah, just going back to that landscaping, Joel, um, I noticed that um, it's a requirement of the permit to have underground irrigation put in for the landscaping. Is that normal, something that we do usually or is it, I haven't noticed it before. Already. It's a general condition that we apply to these okay. developments, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any other? Um, Thank you. Mr Chair. Um, Joel, I know it's in here, but could you please just explain um, what happens with drainage to developed blocks? Because it is one of the concerns, major concerns. Can you please explain how that works? So dra drainage is meant to be retained on the site in a, to retain dra water on the site in a corn in accordance with pre-existing flows. So they need to retain on site uh, so that we're not impacting on flows that are already going into the drainage network. And uh, the condition of the permit requires that to be done in accordance with the infrastructure design manual. So basically in layman's terms, it's not going to have any more water than it does now. Shouldn't have any more additional water, yes. And they also are, oh, if you don't mind, through you, Mr. Chair. They are so also um, supplying car parks internally. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? <laughs> if not, the recommendations on page seventeen and thirty eight part. So I won't read. Really, I'm like to move that. Mr. Davis, seconded. Mr. Um, 
Thank you, Councillor Davis. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, look, this, I think this um, this application and um, and permit. I firstly thank Joel. Um, normally, I look at conditions normally of sixty five plus, but I see there's only thirty eight on this one. Um, I'm not making light of that, but I mean there's a lot of work that Joel has to do to to go into that. So well done, Joel. You've you've covered off on on any concerns that I I sort of have. They're all written down there. Um, First of all, I'd like to say it's, it's fantastic that we get young people in Benalla that are having a go and helping our, hand, our housing crisis. Um, we're ending up with three dwellings here, which, um, and I didn't ask, and I don't think it's my business whether he's going to sell them on or, or rent them out, but it doesn't matter. There's still um, there's still some accommodation for people in Benalla. Um, it's in the central area, so it come, ticks off a lot of boxes. I don't need to go on any further, but um, I'm fully supportive of the um, of the recommendation. Thank you. I'd just like to say it's great to see, as Councillor Davis did, that young people in our town are, are looking at the troubles that we're having in accommodation and such and being able to fix them by being for, for thinking what's going to happen and make their land available for accommodation for other people. Thank you. I think two plans will be approved to January 23. Back to you again, Charles. Thank you, Chair. I present to the Finance and Planning Committee the Building and Planning Department approvals for January 2023. Nine planning permits were issued, one notice of decision to grant a permit was issued, and an appeal was heard at the Tribunal for an electronic sign on the 3rd of February. Uh, however, a decision has not yet been made by the Tribunal on that uh, on that appeal. There were 31 building applications approved within the municipality with council's building unit issuing 16 of those. The total of the approvals were valued at approximately uh, $4.58 million. The recommendation is on page 34 of the report for your consideration. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any questions of Joel? No questions. Um, I just have one comment more than a question. I see that um, the Gun Road development is starting, which I think everyone will be very happy to, to see. So that's just for the earthworks, is it? That's right. Yep. Thank you. The recommendation is on page 34 that the report be noted. Moved. Councillor Ganaretne, second to Councillor O'Brien. Would you like to speak, Councillor Ganaretne? Oh, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, just to appreciate the work done by the planning department and also a Facebook post saying very busy times and a lot of inquiries getting to the department and still getting through 31 applications and what you've done is a great job. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Councillor O'Brien, would you like to speak? Um, just also to say thank you. It continues to be busy. It's not time slowing down at all. So thanks. For all the extra hard work. Thank you. Is there anyone speaking against the recommendation? Would anyone else like to speak for? Councillor Davis. Thank you, Chair. The Chair. Uh, just two observations. It's good to see our local council um, certify, like a building, um, the building permits being issued by council, like um, at one stage it was going out to private enterprise, but now it looks like council's doing um, a fair percentage of the um, of the building permits, which is fantastic to have it back in the house. house. Um, I see where we had a lot of problems when we were using outside people that weren't sort of familiar with um, with Benalla. Um, and the other one is the building permits issued for the month. If you look at the brown brown ones, 21, 22, it's interesting, interesting we're in COVID, the amount of building was being done. Um, now, whether it was, that was stimulation from the government or what it was, but, you know, we had a COVID and we had a, a massive building um, permits issued. Um, 
we're still seeing some at the moment, but it's going to be interesting for the next um, January, next uh, March, April, May, June to see uh, how they align with uh, current trends against against the COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Anyone else like to speak? If not, the recommendation is that report be noted. Move, Councillor Davis. Seconded, Councillor O'Brien. All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Sorry. No, no, no. I didn't move. no moved by yeah. Councillor yeah. Gannaretno. Sorry. Sorry. A bit of confusion there. Um, agenda item number three, the planning scheme review amendment. Joel again. Thank you, Chair. I'll present the Benalla Planning Scheme Review 2022. The Council as a planning authority of the Benalla Planning Scheme are required to review its planning scheme every four years. The Benalla Planning Scheme Review Report was undertaken with assistance from the Department of Environment, Land, Water and Planning through the Regional Planning Hub. Following adoption, the review report is required to be submitted to the Minister for Planning as evidence that Council has met its obligations in accordance with Section 12 of the Planning and Environment Act. Overall, the review found that the Bonella planning scheme is operating reasonably effectively with a clear settlement narrative and for a long-term land and for long-term land use planning. However, the report notes that there are strategic gaps in the planning scheme in impacting on its effectiveness in implementing state and local policy. There are many local schedules that are not populated and there are opportunities for local policies to be further refined. There are also opportunities to remove unnecessary planning permit triggers in the design and development overlays, land subject to inundation overlays and, farming, and the farming zone to reduce workload. The review recommends a planning scheme amendment to undertake changes to the planning scheme in a form outlined on page 36 of the report. And the review also outlines further strategic work, a further strategic work plan for the next four years, which is outlined on page 37 of the report. The recommendation is on page 39 of the report for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Uh, are there any questions of Joel? Councillor <coughs> Firth. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, <coughs> it's just been uh, pointed out to me by the Mayor that the uh, one of the questions I asked at Assembly was that uh, Industrial Zone 3 doesn't exist and it's still there. That could be changed, please. Yes. yes. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Mr Chair. Yeah, Joel, just going down into that first bit there with the discussion on the, um, on the review here, when it says, when you've said it's operating reasonably effectively, how how can we are we going to is there a way that we're going to try and improve the effectiveness of that so that we're working a little bit more effectively? Yes, yeah, so there will be changes within the planning scheme amendment that is to follow that will implement changes to make things more effective. Uh, so so the first thing to do here is to uh, acknowledge the report mm -hmm. and then from that report, we then uh, seek funding as part of the recommendation mm -hmm. to seek ascendance, uh, assistance to undertake the planning scheme amendment. And that's where that some uh, refinements will be made to make things more effective. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions, Joel? <clears throat> if not, Joel, I have one just concerning, I don't know what page it is in the, <clears throat> the new plan, uh, around the um, traditional owners. See, so we've got Tungarung and um, the Yorta Yorta both as traditional owners. I think Bangarang have put their hand up too, but they're not. As far as I know, they're not registered. But <clears throat> have we have we got known traditional owners, or or they're just they're both traditional owners? Uh I'm not an expert on who are traditional owners and who aren't. Uh, we'll be engaging with those traditional owners uh, prior to inserting anything into the planning scheme uh, to make sure that we're doing things yep. correctly. Yeah. Fine. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, if there's no more questions, yes, Councillor O'Brien. 
Yes, so Joel, on um, page 37, the strategic work program, where it's saying uh, in um, item B, remove low value permit, permit triggers, because I know that a lot of those permits um, are what takes up a lot of time. Um, does that mean that um, people on farms won't need to put in permits for farm sheds and the like? That That is something that we'll be looking into oh, or increasing the threshold in which they do need permits. Thank you. Good, thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, the recommendation is on page 41 that the Council resolves to note and forward the Vanilla Planning Scheme Review 2022 to the Minister for Planning in accordance with Section 12B of the Planning and Environment Act 1987 and two, seek assistance from regional planning hubs to prepare and exhibit a planning scheme amendment to implement the Vanilla Planning Scheme Review of 2022. Move, Councillor Firth. Seconded, Councillor O'Brien. Would you like to speak, Councillor Firth? Sorry, you're correct. Yes, you are correct, sorry. With that amendment, you're happy to... Um, to move that. Councillor O'Brien, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you, Mr Chair. Yeah, Joel, um, just to say I think it's really great that we've been given this opportunity. We have to have it anyway, but, you know, we can um, make a few changes and uh, catch up with ourselves, I guess. So, no, it's great. I look forward to seeing what the result of it all is. Thank you. Is there anyone speaking against the recommendation? Would anyone else like to speak for? <clears throat> Okay, all those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Mr Chair, I'd just like to thank Joel for stepping in the last minute too today. It really had a family emergency, so Joel's come in and presented, so thank you. And a great report, Joel. Thank you. Um, agenda item number four, Development Department Activity Report for the quarter ending the 31st of December 2022. Joel again. Thank you, Chair. I present to the plan, uh, Finance and Planning Committee uh, the Dep Development Department Activity Report for the quarter ending December 2022. The planning unit has reviews and studies underway, including a heritage study and planning scheme review and Benella Urban Growth Area Project. 37 planning applications were received and 40 applications were decided upon with 80%. 80% of applications being decided on within the statutory timeframes. The building up unit has undertaken 153 buildings inspections and has processed 38 building applications. The public health unit has undertaken water sampling of private water supplies at commercial food premises without access to town water. The compliance unit has had 46 animals impounded and successfully returned 33 cats and dogs. And then the Manager of Development has issued many septic tank permits, provided engineering advice on many occasions to the planning department and has issued many legal point of discharge requests as outlined on page 42 of the report. The recommendation is on page 45 of the report for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Are there any questions of Joel? Councillor Davis. Um, Joel, on page 43, Vanilla Woodworkers Association and Med Shed Open Air Burning Permit. Can you give me a bit more background on that? Do, do people in the inside the township need a permit to burn and how accessible are they to get? I know that uh, if you, yes, if you're in the township, you need a permit to burn. Um, it's it, It's issued on a case-by-case -case basis on its merits. Uh, not always easy to get. Uh, however, I'd have to take the remainder of that question on notice. Okay, thanks Thanks very much. Are there any other questions of Joel? <clears throat> if not, the recommendation is on page 45 that the report be noted. Moved, Councillor Hearn, seconded Councillor Davis. Would you like to speak, Councillor Hearn? Councillor Davis, anyone speaking against the recommendation? Anyone else like to speak for? All those in favour? It's carried. Thank you. 
Thank you, Joel. It was a bit of a Thanks, mate. marathon effort, yes. <clears throat> uh, agenda item number five, efforts, assets and infrastructure department activity report for the quarter ending the 31st of December 2022. Adrian Gasparoni. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, uh, the purpose of the report uh, is to present the activities of the Assets and Infrastructure Department for the quarter ending the 31st of December 2022. Some of the highlights uh, in our operations area, completed grading of more than 130 kilometres of unsealed roads. Uh, please note that in this quarter uh, included the October 22 flood. Um, that, that is 130 kilometres of road over and above any remedial work we did associated with the floods. Uh, also completed grading of 12 kilometres of gravel shoulders on sealed roads, uh, carried our routine maintenance on our sealed and unsealed road network and uh, responded to numerous requests for assistance uh, uh, associated with the uh, October flood event. Within our parks and gardens and open spaces area, uh, we can commence our contract management provision of elm leaf beetle treatment, provision of slashing services, weed control and spraying, Complete, uh, sorry, <clears throat> commence works for the shelter adjacent to the Sir Edward Weary Dunlop Learning Centre uh, and it attended a large amount of flood recovery works. It sounds like a common theme. Uh, in the waste area, uh, transfer station preparations continue. The proposed fees and charges for the transfer station were adopted by Council during that quarter. The, man the management um, uh, for flooding issues with the newly commissioned cell 3A following the 22, uh, 2022 October flood event, um, curbside waste processing through the Hume Collaborative procurement process uh, commenced in, during that quarter and the completion of the relocator of overstacking material from cell 2A to cell 3A uh, uh, occurred. Um, if I go to uh, the financial implications um, uh, for that period, um, just highlighting uh, some of the areas, the capital projects operations, there's certainly a significant variance there. Uh, that's due to us not necessarily undertaking a lot of scoping work for projects that does tend to happen towards the end of the year. Uh, certainly our... Uh, our time taken on dealing with uh, flood issues certainly didn't help that either. Plant uh, operations, which is uh, the third note there, um, yeah, certainly uh, an increase in, in breakdowns with some of our machines. So um, it certainly wasn't expected. Uh, a lot of those associated costs were uh, materials for the breakdowns. Um, uh, note number five with the sealed roads. Uh, higher than expected uh, depreciation uh, costs there. Uh, same with seven. However, with the bridges, um, that's probably associated with the recent uh, bridge assessments that we did, um, providing a, a, a higher value for our bridges. Uh, and then I'd probably go down to note number 11 associated with our parks and gardens, and that was mainly associated with our street trees. Um, just really haven't had the time to do a lot of uh, work with street trees, but that is expected to happen in the second half of this financial year. Uh, and the recommendation uh, for the report to be noted is on page 52. Thank you, Adrian. Are there any questions of Adrian? Councillor Firth? Yeah, Adrian, thanks for the report. <coughs> Been doing a lot of work. Um, thanks for that. Um, with regards to the unfavourable of, of the uh, repairs to plan, can you extrapolate a little bit on that? Does they, is that new plan or is that is there a reason for it? Or what is the reason for it? If I may, through the chair, um, to be honest, that's probably a, a, an expected answer. It does tend to be associated with our older plant. We have had some significant uh, breakdowns with some of our trucks, which... Uh, interestingly enough, or coincidentally enough, are due to be replaced in coming years. Okay. I guess that's what I was going to Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else got a question of Adrian? Councillor Hearn. Thank you very much, Mr Chair. Adrian, um, it says he commenced the, the shelter at the Sir Edward Weary Dunlop Learning Centre. I believe that's finished. Uh, if I may, through the chair, at, yes, it was, but at the time 
okay. of this report at the end of December it had commenced, but since then it has been completed. I'd just like to add that I've heard some very good comments about congratulations to to you and the boards for the work they've done. Thank you. Thank you. With any other questions of Adrian? <clears throat> Adrian, I have one. What do we depreciate at the landfill? Um, variation there in the depreciation expense. If, if, uh, uh, sorry, uh, in response is it, it is the 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 cells. So obviously, as we know, we um, had cells three A uh, constructed. We pretty much start depreciation depreciating our cells as we construct them. So they don't even have to be finished and we have to uh, start depreciation, depreciating them. Yes, correct. Uh, which can cause us some challenges in relation to some other cells that we may not necessarily have approval for yet. Cell 3B, an example. Thank you. Uh, and the other thing I'd like just like to note, I see we've got a date for the transfer station to open of Monday, the 3rd of April, which is, that is something correct. we'll have the champagne ready for, no doubt. Thank you. That'd be lovely. Uh, if there's no other questions, the recommendation is on page 52 that the report be noted. Move Councillor Hearn, second of Councillor Davis. Would you like to speak, Councillor Hearn? Um, congratulate Adrian and the crews on the hard work they put in during that flood time. It was, it was um, long days and very long nights for them, and um, we appreciate their time. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Councillor Davis, would you like to speak? Thank you, through the Chair. Thanks, Adrian. And, and, and um, the Mayor has stole my thunder on that. <laughs> your, um, your guys and your team have done an excellent job over that period of time with the flood. Floods, not only have they looked after all the damage on the windstorms and the floods and the, the events, but they've also been able to do their own day-to-day -day activities. Um, it's more of a question than... than but I'd like to, I don't know how we can ever, ever get this information through to a road pass, the amount of work that our guys actually do, because I mean, you know, no one's been standing around in this council. And to do all this amount of work, it's 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 taken a lot of hard earned hours and dedication from our staff, both workers in the field and and management staff. So congratulations. And I do hope that we can somehow get this information through to a road pass. Um, in a in a in a, um, a sensible format that they can all appreciate. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Councillor Davis. Anyone speaking against the recommendation? Would anyone else like to speak for? If not, all those in favour. That's carried. Thank you. Uh, agenda item number six: Capital Works Project Status Report for the quarter ending ending thirty first of December twenty twenty two. Adrian again. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There are Report um, presents the activities of the Capital Works Program for the quarter ended the 31st of December 2022. If I may, before I start going through the report, uh, there is an emphasis on the flood uh, uh, and emergency events um, we've had uh, and how we're managing those. But some of the highlights relating to our Capital Works Program uh, a visitor information centre redevelopment is progressing really well, uh, even though we did have a delayed start and we're still expecting uh, a, a completion of uh, Suntron in May, uh, mid to late May at this stage. Uh, architects um, uh, are progressing quite well with the Benalla Art Gallery redevelopment master plan, conceptual designs and stage one designs, and they're expected to be completed in this current financial year. However, the works associated with stage one will be a uh, program for uh, in the 2022-2024 budget. Uh, stage two Faulkner Drive uh, upgrade uh, has been completed. Uh, Witch Street Banala Works completed. Works involve pavement stabilisation and bitumen surface treatments. Um, uh, we also did a similar uh, treatment in the Wallace Street with the microsurfacing works undertaken and completed. Turban channel replacements on various sections of numerous roads as part of reseal preparation works were done. Uh, Old Farnley Road, Benalla, uh, sorry, Old Farnley Road, Benalla uh, and Transfer Station Road, internal road, uh, construction and sealing works are ongoing. Um, 
the project was delayed due to failure of the pavement prior to our seal preparation. Um, just on that, um, we're hoping to have the pavement works finished uh, by tomorrow, uh, Friday at the latest, and we are waiting on confirmation from our sealing contractor who expects to seal the road on Saturday. If not on Saturday, we've been promised at the latest on Monday. Uh, in relation to the uh, uh, the Benalla Indoor Recreation Centre Master Plan, uh, the tender evaluations have taken place. Uh, it was a great response. We had ten tenders, um, all very very high quality. Um, to be to be honest and to be fair, it's 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 caused us a bit of a challenge in evaluating, which is which is a good thing. So um, uh, we're, we're we're looking at that at the moment. Uh, the Cowan Street Banala Basin Works uh, is expected to be finished um, in April 2023. Um, some of you may wonder how that's going to happen, seeing that they're not there yet, but they are expected to start on site on Monday. That is Monday the 6th of March. As I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to uh, focus uh, this report a lot on the uh, uh, on the emergency events that we've had in recent times. Uh, so these fall in and out of, of the quarter. Um, the January 2022 storm event, a severe storm uh, event that damaged community asset mainly rose throughout the north and northeastern areas of the municipality. The cost of the damage was at the time estimated to be in the range of 10 to $15 million. Uh, initial emergency works were undertaken to ensure the community assets were available uh, to a safe standard and access for residents to their, prop to their property was maintained. The cost of those initial emergency works undertaken were over 1.6 million. Um, I won't go through the, the, the whole lot of that section of the report, but it's really, really important to note that following our discussions with the department, um, uh, the it was it was agreed that the assets recovery restoration works affected by both the January storm event and then were hit again as part of the October 22 event would be managed as part of the October 22 of flood recovery works. I know that sounds confusing, but effectively, if roads were damaged in January last year and we were damaged again in October, we're not going to manage those as part of the funding during the January 22 storm event, we're going to manage all of the above in October 22. However, there was a uh, eight assets or roads that were affected in January that weren't re-affected in, in October, and they're listed uh, on the bottom of page 54. Brings me to the October 22 uh, flood event, uh, certainly a significant flood event uh, that affected several municipalities across the state of Victoria. Uh, Benalla Rural City suffered significant damage to their community assets, such as roads, bridges and drainage assets. The estimated damage for this event is believed, estimated uh, to be somewhere between the 20 and $30 million mark. 95% of our cancelled network has been inspected. Uh, more than 160 ha assets have been identified as requiring some level of restoration. Emergency works relating to the October 22 flood event has seen expenditure of $2 million uh, in this reporting period. Just when we thought uh, we'd had enough um, in early January 2023, we were hit by another event, um, and, and that was... I'm, I'm, I believe I'm not allowed to suggest, but uh, uh, in some parts of our community, regarded as a mini tornado event, um, uh, damage following this event saw many trees as well as community and private structures being damaged. Due to the nature of the event and urgency surrounding some of the cleanup works uh, and to ensure safety was preserved throughout the affected area, mainly within the Benalla CBD, the majority of the recovery works have since been completed. Uh, cost associated with this event with this event is expected to exceed five hundred thousand um, dollars. I might draw you to uh, the uh, appendix two relating to the assets um, that have been affected or damaged uh, as part of the flood event. Um, um, some of those have been uh, uh, or have had undertaken uh, emergency work, sorry, undertaken 
Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's where we finish. We've had the emergency works, which, as I mentioned earlier on in the report, that is to ensure that we have safe um, access uh, for our residents to their properties. Um, further uh, asset restoration works will happen at a later date. Um, and then I'll refer you to uh, Appendix 1, uh, which uh, is uh, a new way of presenting our project management dashboard, and that highlights some of our major projects um, and their current status. And I note that the recommendation is on page 57, that the report be introduced. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Adrian. Are there any questions of Adrian? Thank you, Adrian, for the detailed report. It's very uh, self-explanatory, a lot of things, and thanks for going through all of them in detail as well. The, among the Benalla Indoor Recreation Centre Master Plan, uh, the tender, I know you're in the tender evaluation at the moment. What I would like to know, uh, the, the total tender, does that cover the community engagement part? with the master plan development and was just a uh, work for that master plan. Thank you. If I may through the chair, that certainly will include community engagement. Um, as part of the tender evaluation, we'll be keen to probably uh, shortlist those tenderers uh, and then meet with them again um, and probably ask them to provide us with a presentation on how they propose to undertake the project. A high uh, and very important aspect of that project will be community engagement. Great, thank you. And a follow-up question from that. We have been talking about the station precinct plan and also the CBD revitalization station plan. So is that is that a connection between these three plans when we develop all together or would it be separate redeveloping? Thank you. If, Okay. So yeah, we'll take that one. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gunnar. It's through the mayor. The um, the work that we had commencing the report came before the council. I think it was in September last year with the CB master plan. Um, uh, there was some initial consultation work done by ID um, ID look, IE. There was a consultant that we had do uh, some community consultation. They will be presenting that particular piece of work to the council in about a month's time. Um, at an assembly, um, and then we'll discuss on uh, the actions that we take moving forward and um, other other precinct um, discussions uh, around the rail precinct uh, will also fold into that as well. So I had a meeting with the consultant yesterday and just made him aware that he will be presenting to the council, which he's quite prepared to do. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions? Councillor O'Brien and then Councillor Firth. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, just, just driving around town, Adrian, you can see so many bits and pieces being fixed up. We've just been through an incredible amount of um, natural disasters, really. Um, so that's just a comment. But going back here to the notes, after um, following Table 1, the Benalla Art Gallery project will not be completed in 22-23. Is that just, does that mean it may be started in the, in the next financial year, or where are we at with that, please? If I may, through through the chair. So what we're focusing on is making sure that we get the design and the master plan works right. So we're going working with the architects at the moment to make sure that uh, we get that to a satisfactory level before we provide an application through to Heritage Victoria. Considering the time that that's going to take, it is unlikely that we'll be able to start any works uh, uh, and that's physical works, construction works this year, but we are confident enough that we'll have uh, the plans in place in readiness for that to occur next year in the 2023-2024 budget. Beautiful. Thank you. Councillor Firth. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> new water truck expected to be delivered in early March. Did that break down last month? <laughs> <laughs> if I... <laughs> So I'll just compose myself. It, um, if I may, through the chair, um, it actually did, believe it or not. Uh, and however, in saying that, at the time of this report being prepared, we hadn't received the water truck. We since have. So um, there's some good news there. Great. Thank you. 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 Thank
and a follow-up, if I may, may yep. with regards to number four, the works on the playground replacement expected to commence in March. Were you correct uh, those playgrounds have been delivered for that equipment? If I may, through the chair, um, we have started to dismantle the, some of the older playgrounds that need to be uh, demolished or removed. Um, it is expected that the contractor will deliver and um, yeah. install those uh, playgrounds in March um, in the identified sites. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Thank you, Mr Chair. Adrian, uh, page 54, I'm just trying to get my head around lumping, lumping those two events together. Does that create any more work for you, or how does it go funding wise? Do we we're going to get all our money? How does it can just give us a bit of a vision? We're always worried when we start lumping things together. If, if, if I may, through the chair, actually, to, to be honest and to be fair, it probably works in our favour because it probably means less work because um, we don't have to go through a separate process for the works in January versus a separate process for the works in October. There was a majority of assets that were affected in January that got re-affected back in October as well. Um, so the answer to your question is no. Uh, and should it affect our funding? No. Other than there is a council component um, funding component that we have to come up with, which is the uh, first $35,000. So, uh, again, uh, the more that they combine, the better it is for us. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other questions? Councillor Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, Adrian, um, on Appendix 2, um, you have uh, number four, Benalla, Warren Bain Road. It says en engineering solution, it's about the shoulders on the road. It says the width is 1.5 by two sides equals three metres. Is that it? I may just read my notes. Um, if I may through the chair, so what we're saying is for each metre, uh, of roadway, we have got collectively a three metre wide shoulder, 1.5 on both sides. In relation to the engineering solution, this is a challenge that we have in relation to our funding, uh, hence why some of these works still haven't been undertaken. It's not as easy for us to undertake works in uh, uh, remedial works or emergency works associated with, associated with a, uh, a shoulder and then having to come back and provide the asset restoration works as well. What we want to do, and we're having these discussions with the department, we want to go there, go there once and do it properly so that we don't have to go there again rather than having to deal with it twice. Not as practical as it would be, if you like, for a road pavement work. Thank you. Are there any other questions of Adrian? <clears throat> If not, Adrian, I have one on the um, the new project management dashboard. <clears throat> You've got a pie chart here with the budget spent of 11%. Is that correct? Um, if if I can respond, yes, yes, it, it is. Uh, um, that's spent. That's not necessarily works completed. So uh, uh, that's with monies that we have uh, obviously expended that have gone uh, through our our payment. That doesn't necessarily mean that is directly associated with works complete. Um, for example, there is currently invoices in our system that would account for more than that eleven percent. Um, I can't give you, I'd have to take that on notice to give you a up-to-date figure on where we're at as far as costings go uh, to date. Thank you. Um, that probably would be handy because it seems like a very small <coughs> amount of the budget at this time of the year. Budget, not the yearly budget. Excuse me. Thank you. Uh, if I may again, um, it is a total project budget, not necessarily a annual budget. So okay. there's uh, some of these some of these projects um, do cover multiple years. Yeah. Thank you. If there's no other, if there's no other questions. 
the recommendation is on page 57 the report be noted move councillor firth seconded councillor davis would you like to speak councillor firth yes thank you i'll even do it myself thanks very much um <clears throat> Uh, Adrian, I'd like you to uh, take this back to your entire uh, works department with regards to uh, the appreciation of the council. And I would suggest, I would hope the majority of, of our residents, um, we've had a lot to do deal with and you guys deal with it. Uh, the storm damage, especially the, and also to the subcontractors that you've employed, uh, especially with the removal of the, the trees, they did an extremely efficient and uh, exceptional job, really. Um, and Faulkner Drive is one of my um, pet projects over the years. You've completed it. I've uh, I've mentioned it before, but uh, driving down Faulkner Drive now is is a pleasure. And uh, thank you very much for, for delivering that for um, for the the community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor First, Councillor Davis. Would you like to speak? Councillor first said most of it, but just to chop off on that, well done to you and your staff. It looks like you've only been here a short period of time and you're right across most of the things that need doing and all the things that have happened since you've been here. I don't know if you brought a lot of these problems with you <laughs> from Bendigo, but but in in the serious side, we've you know, Benalla seems to cop a lot of these events over the years, and it's good that, as Councillor first said, the to have all the unity with, with the contractors we've got now and to see them all go out and work together, our staff work together, um, and I think our community see that, and just little things like having the landfill open so that so that people could take all. And I think, it, to my knowledge, it was, it's, um, it was still open last week. I don't know when it closes, but um, it's good to be able to get all their green waste away and, and all the tree prunes because... After the event, I know myself at home that there is still tree branches still falling from the trees. Um, that's an, I'm going to say wind up on that, but thank you very, very, very much for giving councillors the opportunity to have this dashboard because I think it's very important that all councillors have got this and when our road players talk to us and they want to know what's going on or where things are up to, we can we don't have to go straight to the staff and ask them because we have a little bit of information here to... to, um, to um, for their appetites. So, Adrian, thanks very much. Thank you, Councillor Davis. Anyone speaking against the recommendation? Anyone else like to speak for the recommendation? All those in favour? Oh, Councillor Hearn, did you want to speak? Um, Adrian, thank you very much for the report. And as the other two councillors have said, the work you've done is extraordinary, especially under such trying times that our governments have made and our community don't understand what we have to do to repair roads that have been damaged. They don't understand that to repair a road, we have to go out and just repair it as it was and then come back later to fix it. And I think this is something that needs to be out in our community and they need to understand the restraints that local government are being put under by our federal counterparts. So I thank you very much and the challenges that you're going with and I hope our community does understand and have patience with us. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. No one else wants to speak. I'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, it's carried. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, item number seven, the Economic Development and Sustainability Activity Report for the quarter ended the 31st of December 2022. Courtney Norton, welcome. Thank you. All right. So the highlight of this report is the success of the Banala Festival. Um, this was despite the flood interrupting the festival, but overall it was a huge success. Uh, Christmas was also very successful with the additional lighting in the CBD, which was well received by the community. The Benal Art Gallery also delivered some really successful programs this quarter, the Jackie Stockdale exhibition and the ACMI, just to highlight a few. Our tourism team launched a Storytown app that gives visitors and residents the opportunity to learn more about the Benalla Street Art. 
and the eco dev team worked really hard on single use plastic ban and supporting businesses uh, that's just to name a few. Other than that, there's a recommendation on page 67 to note the report. Uh, are there any questions of Courtney? Councillor O'Brien. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, yeah, I would agree with you, Courtney. The festival was terrific. Um, it was really great. And uh, everybody sort of got a buzz in before Christmas, which was great. But I'm just wondering that um, comment that you've made about this in the um, heading business development and support the Christmas um, busking. Was there much interest in that? Yes, there was. Mm -hmm. um, we had a couple. Of, so we, the idea around that one was actually to take away some of the barriers that buskers currently have mm -hmm. when um, trying to do that. So that was, yeah, we had quite a few in the main street. I can't, I'm not sure of how many we ended up with or if that's in the report. Um, just check. Yeah, so they didn't provide a um a number, but it was well received by those who were doing it. So. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. So you know, maybe at the beginning we wouldn't get big big uptake, but hopefully to this Christmas. Yeah, we're continues. certainly that. That's my whole idea about. Yeah, that. we're certainly so, looking at expanding it for this year. Terrific. And then there's just one more question that I've got. A follow up question, please. Mr. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, with the Story Towns project with the QR code. Is that up and running? Yep. Oh, but, oh I need to look into that because I didn't know that. Great. Yep, you can. So are people using that, just another follow-up comment and question, um, people using that instead of the directory now about the, because recently somebody's asked again where do they get information about the street out, which seems to be that ongoing concern for many people, but we can direct them yep. to, the, to this. Yep. So the Storytown app doesn't have all the artwork on it, mm -hmm. but it has the majority of ones that are quite famous and then it also has a lot of the details around the artist and things like that. So it's available through the app store. So yes. if you type in Story Towns, the, um, it comes up and you can download it from there. Right. And, and are we able to promote that maybe a little bit more as well? Certainly, like, we'd love it. really interesting for people um, to know what's going on. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Ganaretne. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Courtney, for the report. Um, could you please, uh, are you in a position to speak to the microgrid feasibility study uh, in terms of what sort of energy we are, how much of energy we are, kilowatts we're trying to generate and what are the buildings or areas that we are looking at, the sort of thing? Are you in a position to say anything about it? Uh, yes. So the microgrid is current, the project's actually sitting with RMIT. We actually don't have the results yet. So once we have the results, we'll bring that back to council to discuss further. Councillor Hearn. Thank you very much, Jeff. Courtney, I'm just curious about the Vanilla Gigabyte project. Can you fill us in a bit more? Yeah. Uh, so at the moment, that project has had a couple of hiccups. Um, but we have met with all, well, during the quarter that this report relates to, we actually met with all the stakeholders that are currently involved with that. Um, we're just tying up some loose ends at the moment um, on whether it'll continue or not. Are there any yes, follow up question, Councillor Hearn? Could we get a report on that? <laughs> yes, we can provide a report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions of Courtney? Uh, I have not really questions, more of a... <clears throat> and it, uh, question. Yeah, it is a question. I noticed, is, is this correct that um, the BPAC cinema uh, takings have gone up considerably? Yes. So that's around that we originally did the budget that we would be in the redevelopment by now. So the actual budget, original budget, didn't take that into account. So, Excellent. Are there any other questions? If not, the recommendation is on page 67, the report be noted. Moved Councillor Hearn, seconded Councillor Kenneratno. Do you like to speak, Councillor Hearn? 
Just to say thanks for the work you've done. We did put on some very good events during the year um, with Australia Day and our festival. And great job. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gennarat. Thank you, Great work and a good report. Um, I had a few inquiries from the community recently about the climate change adoption action plan, and some of the community members were not quite aware that we have an adoption action plan. So I directed them to the uh, website. And uh, it's good to see there's a lot of uh, work happening in that space in our council. And I think our community need to understand what we are doing. And this microgrid project is an exciting project, which I'm waiting for. And uh, it's good work. Well done. Thank you. Anyone speaking against the recommendation? Does anyone else like to speak for? <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Councillor Davis. Uh, Courtney, a great report. Um, you've only been here a short period. Um, it certainly looks no, like you know your subject. I'm looking forward to your next report and some challenging discussions um, through the way. But um, um, I'd, I'd just like to see what's, um, what's going to happen when we get our visitor information centre across the road and, he, and when you get your feet under the desk to promote that and, and get it under the way as, as well as the, uh, the cinema. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Sorry, I just... I think it's remiss of me not to have said, Courtney, could, we're, um, all of the councillors have mentioned um, how good our media presence is now. And we'd like to thank you and encourage you to keep that up. That is just. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak? All those in favour? That's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, Courtney. Facilities and Techno uh, Information Technology Department Activity Report. The quarter ended the 31st of December 2022. Welcome, Greg Robertson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The report presents the activities of the Facilities and Information Department for the quarter ending 31 December. Uh, highlights of the quarter include passing of an independent security penetration test on our ICT network. Uh, in this current environment, if there's one test we want to pass, that is the test, and we pass that test with flying colours. Um, and another highlight is the continued strong enrolments in swimming lessons at the Aquatic Centre. Uh, those enrolments are so strong that the centre are considering offering swimming lessons on a Sunday, which is unprecedented. Um, but if the, the, because there is such a waiting list, uh, they're considering that as an option. So that's very impressive. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions of Greg? If not, if not, the re recommendation is on page 71, the report be noted. Move, Councillor Hearn. Seconded, Councillor Ganaratne. Would you like to speak, Councillor Hearn? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Again, thank you, Greg. That's great. I would like to also compliment you. I see on the start of your report about the lighting um, on the trees on Monash Grid and down um, Nun Street. They are fantastic, and I look forward to seeing more lights and trees around our CBD. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. Councillor Gennaratne, would you like to speak? Yes, thank you, Chair. I would like to thank Greg for the report and well done. And the swimming lessons, yes, I took my kids and there's a long list too. So it's good that it's coming on Sunday. Uh, that's great work going through the report and well done, keeping up the facilities well maintained. And beautification of the town is great too. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone speaking against the recommendation? Anyone else like to speak for the recommendation? If not, I'll put it to the vote. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, item number nine, the 2022-2023 Quick Response Grants Program. I presume seeing Tom's not I'll here. Be playing role tonight, Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Robert. Thank you. Uh, just a very quick one, Councillors. Just presenting the uh, March report on the Quick Response Grants, as can be seen from the table on page 73. We've had uh, three applications for $500 each from the Benalla Indoor Recreation Centre and the Benalla Squash and Racquetball Association 
to participate in the Come and Try Day on the 5th of March, which is on a weekend, which has been highlighted in local media and social media. And the last one is from the Tadong Memorial Hall, who proposed to um, uh, commemorate Australia Day, uh, sorry, Anzac Day, uh, with a, an unveiling of a new Soldiers Memorial Park and poppy mosaic on the day. So um, the recommendation is that um, those three different organisations be uh, given $500 each. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Are there any questions, Mr. Barber, on that? If not, the recommendation is on page 74. But, um, moved, Councillor Davis. Seconded, Councillor Hearn. I'd like to speak, Councillor Davis. I've said, I've said, I think I've said a lot tonight, but there's three very worthy um, applications, so I fully support them. Thank you, Councillor Hearn. <clears throat> Anyone else like to speak? All those in favour? It's carried. Thank you.